having a sip of poison to prepare himself, irresistible poison, to, to cite the title of an early poem. Here he is, David Joel of Shapiro. I think the titles of the books are terrible. Once John Cage said, to an idea, hmm, to idea and, and idea too. He looked up at me, I was almost crying, and he said, but to an idea is nice. He was retiring. So, um, I'm going to read a poem. It's very gloomy, and then I'll read a poem that's not. This is um, one that sort of scared me. And I had it in a nightmare. And I'll start with the best American poetry. Easy to find your name because it's alphabetical. You have to talk into the microphone. It's Bloomsday, and yes, I learned the facts of life from the Penelope section. But it went much further than that. And I would advise everyone to read every dot. Kenneth Cope said, you should read Finnegan's Wake because you'll be the only person in your neighborhood <laughs> who's read every word to so try not to cheat. A visit. It was a small family party. Aunt Olive, who tried to save Dallas, pleased after death to have a park named after her after death. Terrified, I got up off my usual position and didn't know whether to look or think, afraid of an encapsulated psychosis. They were quiet. Elaine and Bill de Cunion took a look. And Kenneth, so happy, surprised to have a heaven after all. I decided to accept 10,000 years of imprisonment if that would lighten my father's obvious punishment itself, lightened by his good works for workers. Meyer Shapiro looked on steadily, as if he were watching kings of the world in the scene of excretion, nothing human or divine is strange to him. And I've been crying in the 33 recording of my grandfather's voice played El Moli Rahamin, and I couldn't translate, who he was calling supplicant. I asked for something faster or fall. Then John Haydick arrived, looking for his wife, son, and daughter, happy as if he were building worlds again, and Fairfield in painting gear who had predicted this before, that despite particulars, something was the same. My uncle Bill, born with an open heart, the dead were visiting in the corridor. I was like a charlatan on TV, finding a smile long on the door, or like the philosopher who will always wake and travel for a table risen. The dead were gathering, <coughs> I saw them all. My calm father and my mother like two candles, and his father, Aaron, atheist, good chess player, who taught me to castle early and lift my violin. My father's mother, whom I hardly met, walked without me with my murdered aunts in a nest of keys and locks. They weren't singing. As others concluded, I let them go, heard and listened to very little. The dead have been buried off the ground. I only saw them smile. The consolation of the need, you'll say. And where was Paganini practicing so loudly in the orchestra of heaven? Where was my young dead friend Phyllis and her flute? And where I just had to look more before turning away in terror, a family party party, amateur chamber music, the delights of the dead. something less gloomy. She was very interested in D.H. Lawrence and the word orgasm was never far from her. <laughs> well, then they'll learn something that's too horrible to be known. I was brought up on D.H. Lawrence, so... Not on Rebus, but on D.H. Lawrence. I think that's true. In. And there's an Neruda quote in Spanish, but, but I'll just recite 
this fast, I want to do to you what the spring does to the cherry blossoms. Pablo Neruda, who was later a Stalinist and fellow of all mankind. But he wrote some pretty poems, particularly um, Elemental Odes, which Frank wrote. So this is a, a, a poem that will be done pretty fast. I want to do to you what the summer does to your wardrobe. I want to do to you what the E does to Georges Perec. I want to do to you what the doorman does to the door. I want to do to you what the question mark does upside down. I want to do to you and with you what the song does with the breast. I want to do to you what the singular does to the plural. I want to do with you what the fire escape does for fire. I want to do to you what the air does to the dictionary. I want to do to you what the prose poem did for the poem. I want to do for you what May does for March. I want to do to you what the chamber does to the magma. I want to do to you, reclining, what the sign does to the anticline. I want to do for you what the wheelbarrow did for the good doctor. I want to do for you what the lipstick does to the lips. I want to do to you what a naked foot does to clothed grass. I want to do, I want you to do to me what the moss does to the moss garden. I want you to do with me what a stone garden does to eternity. I want you to do to me what the curve did to a diagonal. I want you to do with me what the womb did for Thomas. I want you to do for me what the moan does for the morning and the dove. I want you to do with me what the airplane did to the cloud. I want you to do with me what the tunnel did to the tennis ball. I want you to do with me what the words did to the song and what the song did back. I want you to do with me what the ion did for the dandelion. I want you to do with me what the tiger did to the lamb sticker. I want you to do for me what innocence did for experience. I want you to do with me what the wine did for the kid's kiss. So I'm a little bit more equation. All these desires. I want you to do for me, with me, what the stiletto did to the eyelids. I want you to do to me what the violin did to the tambourine. I want you to do with me what truth did to sex. I want you to do with me what the skin did to the tattoo. I want you to do with me, to me, and for me what the vision did for the visionary. I want you to do with me what the bottom and top did for the top and the bottom. I want you to do with me what the cure did for the curator. We have to end it, so. I want to do with you what the candle did to the candle in the night, spring, day. Yeah. Thank you.